How's it going, Eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to properly set the governor and throttle linkage on a Tecumseh HMSK 80 or HMSK 100 engine. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So today in the shop, I have a Yardworks 10 and a half horse, 29 inch snowblower here. This has the HMSK 105, so 10 and a half horsepower. Now this snowblower came into the shop with a couple different issues. The first was it did need a carb clean and rebuild because it was running quite rough. However, the customer also stated that it was running at too high of an RPM. And he had mentioned that he tried to take the carb off and redo the linkage. But unfortunately, when he was removing things, he wasn't quite familiar with pretty much how these engines are hooked up. You can also see that the muffler is missing, so that's another issue. I will not be running this engine until I get a new muffler. We'll talk about that later. For now, I'm gonna be showing you just pretty much the basics of this throttle linkage and the governor and how to properly set it. So one of the first things that you're gonna do when you're reassembling your carburetor or intake manifold back onto the snowblower is obviously hook up your fuel line, your primer tube as well but you're going to have to hook up the throttle linkage from the governor arm to the throttle butterfly valve on the carburetor here. And I wanted to take a close up shot to show you exactly which hole that linkage is supposed to go into. And it is the one that I currently have it in. So it's going to be the top far most right hole so that when this rotates to the high RPM position, it is going to be the hole that is closest to the governor arm. And that linkage goes back to the front hole on the governor arm. This is obviously loose. We're going to be setting that in a moment. Next up, coming back to this throttle lever, which also has the spring on it. And we're gonna be talking about RPM adjustment in a moment, but this one here goes into the front second down hole. So the one that you see it in right there, and that linkage there, or rod, goes all the way back to the second hole on the governor. So a lot of times when people are working on these carburetors, they take the carburetor off, and then next thing you know, they take all the linkage off. And when you pop this linkage out of here, this lever here has a tendency to fall down so that when people are going to hook this back up, they run the linkage upside down in this hole here, and then they run it way down there, and that's not proper. So that is the proper position for that linkage right there. And next up, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to properly set this governor arm. So first things first, coming down to the throttle linkage right here, you're going to wanna make sure that the spring is wrapped around and hooked into that position right there. See that? So that, when we throttle this up to the high position mode, even though the governor here is still in the loose position. This, when you pull back on it, should have full tension on it. See that? And again, that is in the highest position. So you wanna make sure that has tension on it. If it does not, that means that the spring that wraps around that has most likely fallen off if you removed this. So all you have to do is wind that spring around once and then hook it in so that it links into that position right there. So in the event that this is loose or maybe it's tight, go ahead and loosen it off anyways until the point where you can get this arm here to rotate. Now it is important that this arm only rotates that much. If it rotates more than that, then unfortunately you have a blown governor gear inside of the engine and you will have to remove the engine, split the block, which is going to be removing this piece from the rear part of the block. And you're gonna have to replace your governor gear because it has a little counterweight system on there so that when the engine spins over, what happens is a gear spins and little counterweights move out and there's a little pedestal that pushes up and it physically moves this. But basically all you guys have to remember is if it moves like this, when this is loose, then you're okay. So for the next part of this, this is super simple. You're gonna wanna make sure that this throttle bracket here or lever is in the farthest forward position. So again, when the throttle's up, that has full tension on it. 
what we're going to do at that point is come down to here and you are going to pull this bracket and that lever out like that. So you wanna pull that as far forward as possible and tighten it up. So once you have that tightened up, it should look a little something like that. So when the throttle is in the high RPM position, once again, that should have full spring tension and full range of motion. See how that works there? That is important. Now for the next step, this is something that I go over on my everything you need to know about carburetor adjustment for one of these HMSK 80 or 100 engines. I pretty much go through how to set the main jet, the idle air jet there, and then the low idle adjustment and also the high RPM adjustment. So just to go over this, high RPM, full tension, this throttle plate right there or the butterfly valve is going to be fully open because that is in the highest RPM setting. If we go down, you're gonna notice that the throttle lever here actually has a position where it kind of snaps into a groove right there. Now that is going to be your lowest RPM position that the engine will go into until you go a little bit farther and it engages the shutoff switch there, which is what grounds out the coil. So it stops producing spark. So this is going to be your low RPM there. So you can see the position right there. This is going to be when the butterfly valve is almost in the closed position. So once again, this is the low RPM adjustment screw, and then I'm gonna go over the high RPM adjustment screw next. So in the event that you go to start up your machine and you are just warming up the engine, you have it on low RPM. If the engine is running at too low of an RPM, what you're gonna do is take a Torx screwdriver, the same one that we used to tighten up the screw or the bolt there on the governor arm, and you are going to come down to this Torx screw right there, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten it up or rotate it clockwise to increase the RPM. So as I tighten this up, it is moving this farther back and opening the butterfly valve, allowing more air and more fuel through. Now on the flip side of that, if you have your throttle lever set to the low speed setting, and you notice that your snowblower is running at too high of an RPM, then you are going to come down to that screw and you are going to rotate it counterclockwise to undo it, right there, loosen it off. And what that's gonna do is it's going to slowly close this butterfly valve, lowering the RPM of the engine. Now I'll try to get a shot here for you guys, but there is going to be a position where you can back the screw off too much and it won't do anything. So basically you wanna have it to the point where it's just touching a little bit because any farther and the butterfly valve will be completely closed. So you're gonna to have to have it touching just a little bit. Now, once you get the low RPM set to where you like it, we can move on to the high RPM adjustment. And if we look, you will be able to see that the screw there pushes up against the linkage that moves the spring. See how the spring is moving as soon as that screw is starting to engage there? But this screw right here is your high RPM setting. So as you throttle up the engine, once again, that pushes everything forward. So as you could imagine, the farther in that screw is, the more tension that spring is going to have, which is going to give the governor more resistance as it's trying to push back and throttle down the engine. So more spring tension, more resistance, higher RPM. So on the flip side of that, if you throttle this up all the way, and this thing is just screaming when you start it up and it's revving too high, what you have to do is come down to this screw here, and it's very simple. All you're going to do is back that screw off a little bit, and it's going to apply a little bit less tension to the spring, and it will lower your RPM only when this is in the high RPM setting. That screw will not affect the low RPM setting of your engine. And one last thing just before we wrap up today's video, in the event that you do properly adjust your governor arm and you have your throttle lever all the way up, and let's say that you've backed your high-speed adjustment screw all the way back, and for whatever reason, your engine is still running at an insanely high RPM, you could have a couple different issues. The first one being an air leak 
at these gaskets here. So there is going to be two gaskets. There's going to be one between the engine block and the upper part of the intake manifold. And then there's going to be the second gasket on the lower part of the intake manifold in between the carburetor there. So an air leak is going to create a lean mixture. So too much air, and that is going to cause your engine to rev up regardless of where your governor or throttle adjustment is set to. Now I talk about lean and rich mixtures in my everything you need to know about carburetor adjustment for these Tecumseh Snow King engines. Once again, you guys can check that video out if you'd like, but these Tecumseh snowblower engines use a plastic governor gear. And a lot of times those governor gears are going to become damaged. I'll just show you some pictures from some other engines. And once that gear gets damaged, it just will no longer spin, which means the counterweight system will no longer function, which means it's not going to be pushing back up against that governor to lower the idle speed or to throttle down your engine. Now, obviously I'm not going to be starting this up because I do not have a muffler. So I'll take you over to the workbench and show you what happened to the one that was installed. So this here is the muffler that was installed on this snowblower. You guys can see just chunks of stuff falling out of it here. This is the little flange that is normally part of the muffler like that. And then that goes to the exhaust port inside of the engine, kind of like that. So this thing completely exploded, like it blew apart. My customer said the thing was way too loud. I'm going to be replacing it because I don't recommend running a machine without a muffler. The bolts are still good and they have this little plate here that once you tighten the bolts up, you just fold this over the head of the bolt so that bolt doesn't back itself off. So that's kind of like a little locking mechanism there. Usually these break and I'm happy that these didn't. This would be an excellent bolt to use a little bit of nickel anti-seize. Unfortunately, I don't have one of these mufflers in stock. However, I wanted to share the part number with you in case you guys had the same issue. So here is a muffler kit for an eight to 10 horse Tecumseh engine. It comes with a muffler, two bolts, and that little locking plate there. And the part number for that kit is an AT-0084. So that is the MTD or the Atlas part number for this muffler kit. However, you can also order it direct from Tecumseh and that is going to be a part number 35056 or a TC-35056. Now, that is a $77 muffler kit here in Canada. I get it direct from the manufacturer so I can sell it to my customers a little bit cheaper than that. But you can probably find these online or from a Chinese parts distributor for a little bit less. You might just have to wait for shipping. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. Simple enough, but a lot of times, like I said, People take things apart and they don't take a picture or make a note of where a certain linkage or throttle cable goes to, and then you can't properly put it back together. But with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.